Hey everybody, it's Whip right here, and um, we're going to be doing a sort of live-ish, not necessarily live per se, but, you know, real-time as I'm doing it, I'm recording, uh, display of how to set up a dedicated server for Imperial Galactic Survival. Um, I had several people request how to do this, uh, specifically the exact steps I took. Um, every step of the way, as opposed to me just having a compiled version. So we're going to have this version, and then we're going to have the quick and dirty version, which will have all like all the steps kind of explained and laid out, and you know a bit more to the point. Uh, this one's going to be me fumbling around. Uh, the last time I did a de dedicated server setup, it was around version like 4.2. Uh, from my understanding, a lot of things have changed between 4.2 and 5.0, or 5.1, I think is what we're at right now. But in either case, um, I'm coming from a fresh install of the Imperium, dedicated Survi ah, Imperium Galactic Survival dedicated server. Uh, you find the installer here in your Steam library. You have to go to navigate to tools. By default, it's usually at games. Uh, you want to go over to tools, which is right here at the bottom. And then for me, I've favorited uh, Imperium Galactic Survival dedicated server so I don't have to hunt through it. But otherwise, it will be in alphabetical order. So once you have that there... Um, <clears throat> What you'll have to do is you kind of just need to go to where it is located. So we're going to go over, um, you're going to right click on it, kind of back up a bit, right click on it, go to properties, uh, from there go to local files, and then you want to browse local files. Um, this will take you straight to where um, Empyrean is installed at. Um, in here we have a bunch of things, um, actually we're just going to nix that guy because that was a holdover from the other thing. Um, so that we just have uh, what's pretty much the stock options in here. Um, Imperium Dedicated launches it, but if you launch it without using the Steam client, you'll get a weird error. Um, fuck it, let's just take a look at it. See, you'll get this error right here. And also, if you do this guy, it should error out with that. Uh, with the Thymidia thing, and that's because you're not launching it through Steam. You have to launch this through Steam for it to work. Um, so, that all said, what you'll have to do is actually launch it through Steam. But before we get to that point, we need to actually configure the damn thing. So what we're going to do is we're also going to delete this last vestige of me having set things up before. We're doing completely fresh, all that jazz. And this will be uh, kind of put together in a comp compilation video of all the steps I've taken in another video. But this is just going to be the long and dirty me thinking out loud and doing things like a stream of consciousness kind of dealy. So anywho, um, so first thing first, we need to go to the wet dedicated .yaml file. That is the configuration file that the server will use and my notepad plus plus just shot itself. Um, the one thing you need to remember is that, um, well, not one thing you need to remember. You can use Notepad. Uh, it's not going to be nearly as nice and neat with uh, these color coding things. I highly recommend Notepad++. It is free. There is absolutely zero reason you shouldn't use it, and I highly recommend it for all sorts of other things aside from editing YAML files. Um, that said, let's get into the meat of it. Um, we have the server config here, and with Notepad++ we can actually minimize bits and pieces section, so we'll just kind of kind of minimize all these. So the first part is the server config. Uh, one thing I will stress, because I've had many people message me about this before, telling me they've, they've looked at it before and they followed all the steps, you need to have one, two, three, four, four spaces between this side area right here, like right here, you'd have four spaces before you start having arguments. If you don't have four spaces, when you start the client for the dedicated server, it will immediately close and crash. That's what will happen if something is wrong with the dedicated server file, configuration file. When you launch it, it will crash if the configuration file is not valid. 99% of the time, that's what happens. If it's an invalid configuration, it just kills the program without even starting it. So if you're having that problem, there's something wrong with your configuration file. Just putting that out there right now. I've seen it maybe over a couple hundred comments on, over the course of all the videos I've done. If it crashes immediately, it is something wrong with the uh, configuration file. So, moving right on. Uh, server port, I usually leave that at the default 30,000. Um, that's just essentially where the server is listening to. Uh, what you will probably have to do is on your router, which I will, much to my own complaints, I will touch on in this video. Um, that is what you're going to want to set up on your router for a um, port forwarding and all, so it knows where to listen for the server, talk, server and clients to talk to you. Uh, the next thing will be the server name, um, a password if you want to set it, max number of players. And remember, when you're removing these little comment uh, pound signs, you make sure you delete 
so it's in line four squares away or four spaces away from that left side of the margin. Because if you just do, we'll say like that, if you have it like that, it will not compile and it will crash when you try to run the dedicated server client. I will stress that again. You need to make sure everything is lined up. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to call this whipraise server. My password, as always, is going to be some sort of play on meat. We'll say Porky for right now. It's going to change, so if you guys see it, you know, stuff like that. It'll be Porky, capital P. Max number of players I want on my server. We're going to want to have, we'll say, top of six. I don't want a whole lot of people here. Um, love you guys and all, but, you know, I, I need to record and not have my computer shit itself because I don't actually have a second machine I'm hosting this on. I'm hosting it on the same machine I'm playing it on. Anyway, uh, server reserve play fields. Um, essentially, this is a number of play fields. The game, the client, the dedicated server client just keeps in reserve that I can just toss out to people when it needs to load things in. Um, default is one. I usually put it to two, and that keeps everything loading quite nicely. Uh, server description in the server browser. Um, max description in that many characters, and it's kind enough to put you 127 dash marks. So over here, we will get rid of comment so that it is... Um, taking arguments and then we're going to say whip raise server come check me out on youtube whip ray 310 um there we go and then that's my cert when i'm when you click on the server browser that's what will be for the thing for the description um it tells you next thing is all server play fields or all play field servers will automatically be stopped every n real time hours probably going to warning message before stopping um i usually just leave this um, by default, uh, which is 48 hours. I always turn my server off um, when I am um, not running it because I don't want time to advance and I don't want other people logging into the server and stuff like that. Plus, I like shutting my computer down. Um, that all is set inside. Um, if you're renting a server and you're configuring your thing, you may want to set this probably to leave it default. I don't really know what it does. Uh, well, aside from the, you know, every, every 48 hours it will stop the play fields. Um, next step is for Telnet. If you rent a server, this is typically how you're going to be able to configure it, from my understanding. Um, you need to enable Telnet to be true. And then this will be telling what port the Telnet will be listening for your machine at. And then the password. So if I were to have a remote server I was managing, uh, I would enable Telnet to be true. I would leave it at port 30004. So when I'm going to connect, when I'm going to Telnet into the server, I can tell the thing connect to this IP address at this port. And I'll hit enter and then I'll go, okay, what password do you, are you supposed to be putting into me so you can let, so I can let you in? And then that would be the Telnet password. But for me, I'm not doing that because I'm hosting my own local machine. Um, EAC active is false. Uh, that's essentially the anti-cheat stuff. Um, I am going to put that onto true because I'm not expecting Tornath to, tr to, uh, cheat or anything like that, but I mean, it's not a bad thing to have it on there just in case someone comes on or what have you. Uh, save directory, by default, it goes to the saves, which should be, it's not that guy, uh, right here. That's all it's saying, it's just, this is just the default saves directory. Um, <clears throat> over here, restrict allowed blueprint size class, restricted types are not allowed to be produced or spawned. Um, Essentially, if someone were to connect into your server and they have like a like a massive ass capital ship, that would be at like level uh, nine or ten. Ten being no limits at all. Nine being the hum most humongous thing you can think of. Um, one being like small little hover vessels and stuff like that. Um, I usually just since it's just me, Tornath, and maybe a couple of my other friends, I'll leave it at unlimited because I know they're not going to purposely blow up my server. Um, plus they usually don't build things not on the server, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, usually I just leave this at the default. If you're running your own server, renting your own server, you may want to adjust that to make sure things don't get lagged out. Um, next section is restrict blueprint types. Uh, none. You can completely turn off the blueprint system. Stock only. They can only use the ones that are stock in the game. And then all, which means people can bring in you know custom blueprints. Again, if you're running your own server, managing your own server, pick it to whatever flavor you would like. Um, next, uh, moving on is uh, timeout in seconds after which a playfield server will be killed. A playfield server will be killed and all players on it disconnected. Um, if it, you know, essentially, if things time out, it just kills it. Um, this would be uh, 15 seconds. So if nothing is responding for 15 seconds, it kills it, just so it's not causing issues. Um, you can also just disable it by putting in a value of zero. 
Uh, next up is timeout in seconds after which a client will be disconnected if it no longer sends heartbeat message to the dedicated server. Again, by default, it's 30 seconds. Um, if you don't if you don't comment it out, it will stay out of the default of 30 seconds. Sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then zero will disable it entirely. Again, it all depends on how much you want to have your server set up so that it will or will not boot people if their latency is too high. And then extra log for outputs for debugging purposes. Uh, these are really good. Like if you're having an issue where your game is just randomly crashing or your dedicated server is randomly crash crashing, you can go over into the uh, dedicated server server section into the logs file, and it will sort all the logs by um, date created. And you can actually look into the file. Like we'll look into this guy right here drag this over to the monitor and this will give you all the stuff as it's trying to load everything what your video card is as you all can see what i'm running and if there's any errors and stuff like that it will it'll pop up down here and tell you what the error is and usually when people are asking me for help that's one of the things i'll ask is can you send me your log file because in there it'll specifically tell you what the error is is the configuration invalid do you have a corrupt file is there a networking issue? It's it's nine times out of ten. It is in these error logs. Um, if it's like an unknown issue that we can't figure out just through me walking through steps with you, so your logs file is very important. Um, anyhow, but uh, this is saying, do you know, do you want to have extra stuff in your log files? Um, I'm gonna leave this all at default because mine is verbose enough. I don't need to have extra logging and crap like that. But that was the server configuration section. So next up, we're gonna go to game configuration. Um, right here is the game name. This is going to be uh, what your save file is essentially going to be. Um, it even says right in the comments. We're going to do uh, multiplayer whip ray uh, version 5. Because we're on version 5 point something of the alpha right now. Game mode, survival or creative. You all should know what this is. Creative, you, have, you don't have to worry about dying. You can fly around. You can spawn and build anything you want to. Survival, things are actively trying to eat you while you're trying to do all that stuff and you have limited resources and such. Uh, seed is the random seed that your galaxy is created in. Um, changing that number. And if like one person uses a certain seed and you want to have the exact same thing, you can get the seed number from them and then you know, you'll have the exact same planets, mineral spawns, alien spawns, what have you. Uh, for this one, let's see here, we have, what, three digits, seven digits, so let's do, uh, let's see here, what was it, uh -huh. Uh -huh. sure, that looks good, um, that'll be our random seed for our galaxy, uh, next are all the time, next is going to be the game time, wipe time, and protection time. All of these time are given in real-time hours, i.e. one hour of real time is approximately 24 hours in game. Um, and timer counts down as long as the dedicated server is active, and deactivated playfields don't stop the timer. So if uh, no one's on the moon, and it's been like two hours or so real time, i.e. two in-game days, and there's no block, it just despawns at whether or not anyone's actually there. Uh, in this case, I'm leaving... Um, that on because in the event that me and Tornath get our ship blown up, I want the thing to despawn because if it doesn't have a core anyway, eh, doesn't matter. Warp time or wipe time, uh, any player built uh, structures, if they haven't been visited, they'll get completely and utterly wiped. That's disabled because nine times out of ten, we're always going to be present because I don't ever have the server on that long. And then offline protection, if you're running a multiplayer server with a bunch of random people, when you're offline, that's number of hours, um, real time hours before things are be vulnerable to destruction. <laughs> Max structures is the max number of uh, structures per play field. 255 is the limit normally. Um, it will reduce performance problems, uh, reduce it on performance problems. Um, mind you, this is per play field. So if you have Akua, Akua's moon, Omicron, Omicron's moon, each one of those is a separate play field, including the space section in between them. Those are all different play fields. Um, so this is the max number of structures per one of those. So if you really want to be really tight on your resources for your server, you can crank that down so it's not lagging everything out. <laughs> Uh, Anti-grief distance is distance in meters around a faction's base, which another faction's base can be built. Um, I believe, yeah, they have a different distance for ores. But essentially, if you're worried about people building too close to each other and griefing, that's the setting you play with. Uh, Anti-grief zone, um, zone which the anti-grief distance is valid. So if you're on a PvP server right now, it's not going to give a rat's ass about that uh, uh, no griefing distance because you're on a PvP realm. 
uh, if you're if it's PvP PVE, uh, like on uh, Akua and stuff like that, it won't let you build. If it's P if it's not like PvP and PVE, it essentially limits you to who can grief. Um, if you put it on all, then it's always going to be valid. If you just do PvP, only on PvP will it be valid. And if you do on PvE, only PvE will be valid. Um, Anti-grief distance for ores uh, prevents people from building too close to ores or over top ores to prevent other people from accessing, accessing them. That's 15. Because it's just me and Twinath and we hate having to build a gazillion meters away, we're going to put that to 15 for personal preference. Uh, PV, uh, the Anti-grief zones for ore, I'm going to put this to all so it doesn't matter at all. To uh, anything like that, and I'm not exactly sure about case sensitivity, but um, from what I've read about YAMLs, they're very particular. Make sure you are matching the case sensitive for the allowed arguments. So if it says capital A L L, make sure it's capital A L L. If it's PVP, capital P, lowercase V, capital P, make sure the capitalization is the same, or otherwise you may have issues. Um, <clears throat> enable trading. Uh, they have introduced trading mechanics in the game. This is saying, do you want to allow it or not? Um, like a global marketplace, and then do you want to enable a max counting of blocks? Um, we're going to leave this at true because I, my poor machine is having to run the game and run the decayed server, and I don't want to kill myself. Um, origin default, the na default name of the origin. Uh, origin access others. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the origins. Um, previously in... Uh, earlier builds they had things where you would make essentially your own faction i know normally would you we would do team rocket is one that we've been going with for a while uh now you can do the default origin is going to be explore and then you can allow other people false will allow not allow any other alliances to join with or join two factions from other origins factions per default or allied if not are not same origin etc 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 um i haven't honestly played with these much um i'm gonna leave these at the default because um, this way, uh, friendly fire and PvP is off, you know. So if you, I shoot a friend, it's not going to hurt him. Um, actually. Oh, no, allied structures. That's what it is. Allied structures, not players. <laughs> so apparently PvP for players isn't off unless you're on a PvP world. But this one is, if you fire on a structure, it'll, you know, do its thing. Origin auto alliance. Factions per, uh, are per default allied if they're in the same origin. And then... False will not allow any allowances with or join two factions from other origins. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I haven't looked at that much. I'm going to leave that at the default because that's not something I've really messed with. That is something if you so choose to modify or tweak it on your own server, that's where you would do it. Um, difficulty settings. Um, they do require a restarting a new game to take effect. So sometimes you can configure things on the fly, something you can't. Like for a lot of these things like the warp and decay time, you can modify that after the fact and it will take effect. With difficulty ones, it will not. Um, in this case, uh, as I recall from when we played on hard mode last time, uh, having the ore spawns being super low was a pain in the balls because it, we almost had nothing on the planet with which to pull from. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to... We are going to change... The number of ore deposits to plenty so that there's lots of deposits but then we're going to change the amount of ore in each deposit to poor so there'll be a lot of deposits but there's not going to be a lot of them in each one so this way you know we can relatively easily find a bunch of things but there's not gonna be a lot we're gonna have to move on very quickly uh, our next thing we're gonna tweak for the difficulty is gonna be the difficulty of the drone base attacks um, as it says right here, influences the difficulty of the drone attack, base attacks, infinite waves, number of waves, etc. I'm going to put this on the hard because I do enjoy having to deal with, you know, those wave attacks until you can blow up the drone base. Um, difficulty drone presence influences the overall number of drones that are present on the planet. We will crank this up to, uh, I guess, fuck it, we'll just do hard because I like being hard. Uh, the spawn rate of NPCs, enemies on NPCs on the planet, we're going to leave that at a normal, I guess. Uh, difficulty attack strength when attacking enemies. We're going to leave that at normal. Because um, on hard, it was a bit of a monster before. With some of those turrets. Actually, let's up the spawn rate, I get. No, no, we'll leave it at normal. We'll leave it at normal. Uh, constructor time. Uh, we're going to leave it at normal. Um, that's when you feed something to constructor, how long it takes. The blueprint time, however, um, from what me and Tornath have done, uh, this influences how quickly blueprints build while they're in the uh, blueprint factory. Um, I have found even normal, even faster is really slow. 
Um, I wish they had a fastest mode, but they don't. They just have faster. But that influences how quickly your blueprints will craft, and anyone else on the server how quickly they'll craft. Uh, player progression, we're going to leave that at normal. Uh, difficulty of escape pod content, medium. Actually, we should probably put the player progression at slow. Let's make this a bit more interesting. So there's all of that. And those are all the things for the server and the game configuration here. And note what it's here is at the top. To use your own uh, dedicate that YML, add this argument here to the corresponding batch file. So what we're going to do here is we're going to file, we're going to save as, and we're going to call this guy my dedicated. My dedicated right here. Uh, I'll just do that. Save it. This way I still have the original, so if I want to go back and do something like a tweak to that, I have the original to work from. You don't want to destructively edit things if you can help it. So next what we're going to do is we're going to do this guy right here. Control C to copy it. And we're going to find the batch file. And all right, here it is right here. Uh, so the batch file is going to be right here, Imperial and Dedicated. We're going to edit this guy. And we're going to put this... I think it was right here, because this is where it's got the other dash arguments. And then I think I just called it my dedicated. There we go. So we have my dedicated, and I'm going to make sure the case matches, because I don't know how finicky this batch file is going to be. It shouldn't matter, but I don't want to play with I don't want to risk it. So I will leave it at uh, lowercase my dedicated.yaml. Um, so that is that. The next thing that we have to look at is if you want to, in I believe it was the save section, they have an admin config example. Um, we will touch on this right here real quick too. So what this does is it lets you set admins on your server. Uh, the way you do this is uh, on your Steam profile, you have a Steam ID number. And usually you can find it by going to this little link here and I'll pull it up on my browser and I can show you guys. Um, <clears throat> so we are going to go to um https colon slash steam id dot io slash so here we go this lets you look up your steam id uh, make sure my no scripts off so we're going to look up whipray and we're gonna look me up so in here it says my steam id is these characters so we kind of look over here and see put steam id 64 here so we're looking for cid 64 so that's my steam id so we would copy that in uh, this is the evan example as uh, an example. This is the example one. So here we would do that permission three, which is game master, and then you know because it says one three is for game master, six is for moderator, nine is for admin. Other values are not allowed. So if you put another value in there, it will crash it. It has to be one of those three values. Um, and then what you can also do is you can ban people, which I'm going to assume with ban players id da, 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 da. okay make this user a game master i'm going to assume actually i don't even really know here because it doesn't say how to define them as a ban i'm not sure how you would handle bans them but i do know that if you were wanting to set up like a a, a game master or whatever or an admin like if i want to make myself an admin i would just change this to a nine and then there we go, because that's my Steam ID number, and my permission number would be admin, so I'd be able to do things. I'm not sure how they want you to handle being ban how to do bans, because it just says um, until is the time of when a ban ends, and it doesn't actually say how to differentiate between you know a super user and a ban. Maybe you put it under permissions. I'm not sure. That's something I'm not really. A whole lot of experience with but a lot of people do ask you know how do i set up a admin or something like that and this is the place you would go to and keep in mind the directions that say um you need to rename this to admin config.ymail for it to actually be effective i'm not going to mess with it because i ultimately can just push the off button on my damn server and i'm not worried about it uh so we're just going to close this guy here we're not going to save the changes um and again i know i'm kind of like flipping back and forth i'm fucking up i'm some of these things i don't know what i'm talking about this is the stream of consciousness video on how to make the dedicated server because some people want to see exactly the process I go through when I troubleshoot stuff and exactly how I go from like start to finish. So anyway, my dedicated dot ym did that not save it right? It did not save it right. All right, let's try this again. Um why am I ain't my markup language? 
Did I actually save that right? Okay, so when you actually do save it, make sure you do save it as a dot. Make sure it does actually save as a YAML file. Because it didn't actually do that on mine, that would cause a problem. So we need to go over here. And I'm glad I caught this, but it's Y-M-A-L. Not, um... Yeah, Y-A-M-L. So I need to make sure that my extension actually matches the one it's looking for. If I have YML, it's just going to go, I don't find a YAML file of what you're telling me to look for, so mm, fuck you. You need to make sure the extensions match, because my thing wanted to default to YML, YML as opposed to YAML. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, anywho, we've got all that configured. So theoretically, I should be able to launch this now. Oh, nope. There's one other thing I want to touch on. Let me close out all my damn windows. Um put this over here real quick. So Oh no, it's not the right address. So what I'm doing now is I'm logging into my router. And for the sake of me not giving everyone my router stuff to log in and do horrible things to me, I'm logging in on a secondary page. Here we go. So as you can see here, this is what my router login page looks like. And I please beg all of you, please don't do anything to compromise me. I'm trying to do you guys a favor. Don't be mean. Anywho, um, one thing you have to do is you have to set up port forwarding for this stuff to work with the external server. If you're doing Hamachi or you're renting your own server, you won't have to worry about this. But if you're hosting your own one from home, you're going to have to set up uh, port forwarding and probably static IP for yourself. Um, I also set myself into the DMZ so that I eliminate any and all issues stemming from um, network connectivity. So what I do from is from here, um, I'm running some shitty ass modem I'm getting from Time Warner Cable. I mean, they have horrible things happen to them because they've got terrible service and they charge a lot of money for what they offer, which is not very good. Um, in any case, um, I had to go and make sure on connected devices, um, I have Blowtorch, which is named my PC, and I have a reserved IP for it. And essentially, what that does is it means no matter what happens with my MAC address, please don't abuse this, guys, um, I'm going to have my IP address set to that on my home network. The reason this is important is because um, when you're setting uh, port forwarding up, you have to tell it what IP is going to be listening on ports. And if you have a thing where it's changing the IP, you can do setting, you can apply change, change uh, port forwarding onto the port, but it'll be for the wrong IP address because you're by default, most router, routers will just randomly assign ports as they're available. But for my case, I specifically set my computer to have 192.168.0.9. <clears throat> and so what that lets me do is I can always, I always know my um, computer is going to have the same IP address. And the reason this is important is because when we go over to uh, port forwarding here, you'll notice that it's going to ask me what the service name is, what type it's going to be, and the start range for the ports. And here, as you can see right here, that is the port of my PC. If my port is not that number, this port forwarding does not work at all. You have to make sure your server IP address is going to be the same every time and apply these port forwarding rules to that address. And that's why a lot of the times I don't, like a lot of people ask, like, it's not working, I can, it's running, and I can connect to it if I try to go into it through my local network, but it's not talking to the big server. And it's probably because you didn't go into your router and you didn't specifically, one, set your uh, server to a static IP address, and two, um, actually setting the port and all for, um, for it to be able to communicate out. And for me, all I do is click add service. It asks me common services, AIM, FTP, other. I do other. I name the service. I click both TCP and UDP. I, t I tell it what server address is, what the machine that I want to have this rule is, in this case, 0.9, because that's Blowtorch, my computer. Um, I don't use IPv6, so that doesn't matter. And then the starting port range. So for Imperium, it's 30,000, and then it goes to 30,004 for the ending port. And then I would click Add, and it would put it over here. But that's what I have right here. Um, and I've had to do that for Warframe, and I was tinkering around with the Stardew Valley multiplayer mod that they have, that the unofficial one. It didn't work for me. If anyone work, has that work for them, please let me know, because I like to play that with Tornaf. But in any case, that's one of the really crucial steps you have to do in order to get this to work. The other thing I also do is DMZ. Um, I enable the DMZ. I don't mess with it for IPv6, but for IPv4, I do set my main machine to be DMZ'd. So it's in, a, it's, it's in an area that can be freely access, accessed by the internet. Not great for security, but to make sure all of my networking stuff works and I'm able to host games, I have to have this set. So those are that's the big secret magic I always do is, you know, I have to set up port forwarding and all. Um, and that's really all that is. So we're just going to close that out. And we are going to attempt to run the dedicated server client. 
hopefully we don't have any weird errors. And as we can see, it looks like it's booting up, which is good, because I haven't actually booted up Empyrean in ages. Because the way we'll know it's good, because it should have the reserve available being 2, because that's what I set it to. If it's saying 1, then that means I didn't. it didn't catch. Um, and it doesn't look like it caught, because it's still saying just 1. And we know for a fact that in my dedicated... Um, no. In my dedicated, it's supposed to have reserve 2. So just to verify this, what we're going to do is we're going to launch Imperium, and we're going to try and connect to what should be our server. Which, it's not there, but we just want to be extra sure that, you know, it's not there. <clears throat> and again, if this runs on a bit because I have a lot of fuck-ups, that's the whole point of this video. It's what I'm going through from points from start to finish to get a server up and running. Because a lot of people requested it, and this is one of those, like, stream of conscious things of this is, this is how it's working, this is how I do it. Because I'll probably compile it into a much shorter... Because I know we're pushing like 30 minutes right now. I'm probably going to be able to compile this into like a 15 minute video on how it works. Um, just because I won't have to explain everything and I won't have to worry about... Does this work? Because it'll already work magically for whatever reason. I don't know how that happens. <clears throat> so we wait wonderfully for the game to load in. Also worth noting, I uh, got a brand new webcam. I think this is the first video that's actually showing with the brand new webcam. Um, I've redone my green screen a bit in the back, so instead of like stretching onto the floor, since I don't actually use all the stuff that's on the floor, I strung out all, I guess that's about 10 feet in either direction, and it's about a foot off the ground now, but I have complete and total green screen coverage, so I can actually ha, 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 not have to worry about all kinds of other funky things. As we're, you know, still waiting for the game to load, because this game takes for fucking ever to load for whatever unholy reason. There we go. Alright, so we're going to go to multiplayer, and we're going to look for a thing... And that's probably my server right here, because that's probably got the lowest ping, but it's not the server I was looking for because, you know, it doesn't have, yeah, it's not CMS server because it's not actually running. And again, the best way I found to discover if it's running or not is that's why I also partially set the reserve playfields to 2+, plus because I can know immediately is it using my configuration file. So, uh, we're going to save and exit there, because obviously something did not catch. Um, so, our next thing is probably going to be, delete that guy. So, the next question is going to be, we're going to go over to tools. What is this actually running when it tries to run the client? Um, local files, general, here we go. Set launch, I know, local files... Dates, yeah, browse local files. All right, so when I run this, this should be running this. Start dedicated with GFX. Da, 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 da. Actually, theoretically, no, because if I try to run the other thing, it's going to have a fit. Um, hmm. Now the fun part of me troubleshooting. <laughs> okay, so we are in the dedicated server. I'm wondering if maybe it's just not wanting to... Maybe I just need to do... Start... Maybe I'm... Need to do it that way. Um, so let's go back in here. Edit. We're going to grab that guy. Copy him. And then we're going to try toss... Oh, fuck me. We're going to try putting it here. Because maybe this is where it needs to be. So my dedicated... That YML. I'll make sure I spell the damn thing right. My... D E D I C A T E D. Yep. Okay. So we're going to save this guy. And then we're going to close this guy. And then we're going to try launching the dedicated server client again. <laughs> and let's see if we get that two play field thing. Because it's trying to do something. Yeah, see, it's just requesting one, which means it's not getting the right configuration file loaded. So what I may have to do, because before you could just run it directly from the damn batch file, which was great, Danny and Hunky Dory, but. Um, they don't want you to do that anymore. So what I may have to do is just make a copy of where does the dedicated the where is okay? There's dedicated YML. We're gonna make a copy of this. Come on, pull up, pull up. Oh, I have to actually make paste. All right, so now dedicated copy, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this guy. This is just dedicated that YML. 
we're going to go over to here and we're just going to rename this guy dedicated.yml. So it's essentially, Steam is probably wanting to say launch this with this configuration file. So that's probably what it's looking for since we're not actually running it through the batch file anymore. And then because we're doing that, just to, just to make sure our bases are covered, we're going to set that to that so it matches the configuration file name. And then we're going to try and launch this again. And this time, if I'm guessing right, come on. No, I don't want to download it. Uh-oh, did it not just... It may have just disappeared. <laughs> Let's see what happens. If it just immediately disappears, that means I have a problem with my config file. Which is entirely possible. Yeah, so it's immediately disappearing. There's a common error I get. So that means we need to go over to the log file and figure out what the hell is going on here. So date modified, and that's today. Which one's the most recent? It is 1058. So this guy. So this is our log file from just a moment ago. We're going to look down here, and here we go. Um, exception during deserialization. Let's just maximize this guy. Requested value hard was not found. And so we have a problem right there with that not being valid, which means we just need to, yeah, cause see right here, it'll do a thing. If your stuff's not valid, um, startup will be aborted. So what we need to do is we need to close this guy, go back one, go back another one, get back in here and dedicate YML. Uh, no. All right, so we were looking for difficulty hard cause that's not valid. So, Where was the thing? Oh, wait, wait, let's, let's, let's look back at the log file again. And should have this guy, and then this guy. And so it said, message is harmless, message, here we go. Um, here we go. Um, error while reading server configuration from this location. Um, while we we'll do not get core, except during geo serialization, file name unknown, file name unknown, da da da, solar system type, uh, let's see, where is it at, file unknown, file unknown, oh, here we go, here we go, uh, system argument exception, the requested hard was not found, line 20, set, or 79, column 28. So we said 79, difficulty drone presence. Ah, yeah, see, so here it's supposed to be low, normal, high, off. I put hard like an idiot, and that's an invalid argument, and that's why if you try to launch something with an invalid configuration file, it immediately closes. And it's just something as simple as me putting hard instead of high. So we're going to put that in there, we're going to save it, and then we're going to close the log file, close that out, and then we are going to go and launch server again. And we're going to see what happens here. Oh, see, now we can tell it worked because right here you see it does reserve systems equal two, which means it's reading this. That's the other reason I always put it at two while the default's one. So I can immediately tell it's loading my actual configuration file because it's loading up two of those. So now that it's actually running, let's fire up Imperian itself. Dun, dun, dun. And we should be able to see our server just kind of out there in the lobby because we've already made the exceptions in our router and we've already made the firewall rules. Uh, you may have to go into Windows Firewall and play with things like that. Um, it's essentially simple as just selecting the program and saying allow through the firewall. Uh, that's all I did. Uh, usually the thing that was on your router end. So let's go over to multiplayer. And as you can see right here, we have our server now. And that's all that was. So uh, big things to remember, um, just kind of wrap the video up here because we're almost at 40 minutes. Um, the configuration file, if it is not precisely valid arguments, it will crash it immediately upon launching it. That's why it will immediately disappear. You saw it happen to me here because I put hard instead of high. Something as simple as that. Spacing matters. You have to have at least four spaces from that left margin. Otherwise, it will immediately crash. Um, I've had problems with other people mentioning to me that the uh, administrator file list, if that's not correctly configured out right, that will also cause crashes. Um, I had an individual who was having issues with it, and it, they were resolved as soon as he started using a uh, standard admin log file. Or not admin log file, an admin uh, listing file, as opposed to his custom one. That was literally all it was to get it up and working. But uh, yeah, we're going to wrap this up here. 
Um, this uh, will probably be shortly followed within the next day or so of the condensed version, where I just have everything already condensed down, and it's just a bullet point thing of you do this, that, the other thing, and it runs. This is the full experience of what I have to go through to get my servers to run in order to make these videos, and so that you guys can understand. Because I had a couple people who were like, what's the process? How, what's the exact steps you go through and take to do it? These are the steps I took. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, plus one, all that other jazz. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will catch you on the next episode, probably soon, with more Empyrean, because I actually have the server, car set, the server client set up now. So until then, toodaloo.